Italia. Pizza, pasta and la dolce vita. But spoiler, things didn't go as planned. The weather was shit, shit. Many, many flat tires. This is flat tire number three in two days. Creepy people at night. And I was like, bop, 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 bop. General bad mood. I'm not in a very good mood. And messed up road situations. <laughs> Ich kann es nicht mehr, ich habe keinen Bock mehr. I'm Jane Chirio, a bicycle traveler, and in this episode I'm going to take you with me through Italy. I didn't have the best time of my life and I'm going to show this. I'm filtered. If you're expecting some nice, happy, hippie backpacking scenery, this is your opportunity to stop watching the video because you won't find that here. You just take whatever you get. I'll start my trip in Civita Vecchia where I arrived by ferry and I'm making my way along the coastline. Then I cross the Italian boot to reach the ferry port of Bari, my final destination in Italy. 600 kilometers and let's go. say ciao. When I thought of going to Italy I was like oh yes bella Italia. Much sunlight, much pizza, much I don't know what but actually I started cycling yesterday and it was horrible like seriously it was pouring down rain all day long everything was wet and I well, I was in a miserable mood but I just kept on cycling. I planned 600 kilometers I'm gonna skip Rome and actually I'm gonna skip Naples too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even though I've heard that Naples is actually the birthplace of the Italian pizza. Uh, I don't know if that's true. That's actually dangerous superficial health knowledge. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna find <laughs> another good pizza. Sun is shining a little bit, which makes me super, super freaking happy. Cause last night, seriously, it was, it was pouring down cats and dogs and I, holy shit. I was just laying in my tent and the rain was so loud and I, I was just like, oh, shit the weather forecast is shit as well but uh fingers crossed for some sunny hours today I just met him on the road and we were talking and now uh, I have a flat tire and to be honest this is flat tire number three in two days and uh, yeah now he's helping me fixing the flat tire and then I'll be ready to go the street of Rome is not beautiful <laughs> what's not beautiful? The street of Rome uh, the streets, yeah yeah it's true it's true I don't know why but yesterday it was broken glass I met Leo while cycling along the coastline not far from Rome. As I was speeding a bit, he seemed quite impressed and asked me if my bike was an e-bike. We both giggled when I told him that my legs were the batteries of the bike and we had a nice chat until I noticed that my tire lost air. Leo insisted helping me, so together we changed the inner tube to keep the wheels rolling. Thanks, Leo. That was a very nice encounter. Um, back on track, back on the road. Uh, hopefully that was the last flat tire for today. I don't know what's happening like I didn't have any flat tires within the last I don't know month I guess I don't know if I'm lying but I can't I can't remember having a flat tire and now it's uh, three flat tires in a row anyway let's go This is 
what tailwinds do. 30 kilometers an hour and I'm not even pedaling that much. <laughs> That's exactly what I needed. A little bit of sun, a little bit of wind from behind and here we go. I decided to cycle back because on the map I saw a path and it looks like a very beautiful gravel road and I don't want to miss that out so I'm gonna go back find the path and see where it leads me to here it's literally wild camping paradise but as wild camping is illegal in Italy as it is almost everywhere in Europe uh, I can't just pitch the tent anywhere so I always have to hide a little bit and play hide and seek without seeking uh, I found the road but it's uh, sand so I can't cycle here and yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go a couple more steps and push the bike. But if it's uh, if the path is a sand path, I'm not gonna go that way because it's so exhausting to uh, just push the fully loaded bike over there. It looks like gravel, but when I come closer, it's sand. Um, so yeah, let's see. <laughs> And nay. Oh no. <laughs> Freaking can't cycle here. Oh, that's a nice gravel path. Oh, I'm so glad I went here. <laughs> it's so freaking amazing. Wow. night um, <clears throat> I pitched my tent yesterday at that wonderful camp spot now I woke up on a official campsite here's my tent and my stuff um, yeah what happened uh, when I was about to pitch my tent I heard noises coming towards me um, so there was a man which yeah was not that big of a deal he was just passing by turning around a couple of times didn't say didn't say anything but yeah i just told myself not to panic um because yeah i thought maybe it's just uh someone who wants to enjoy the sunset and yeah i pitched my tent then i started cooking and ate my pasta and then again I heard noises and I turned around and there was another man coming towards me and, and I was turning around he kind of freezed took some steps backward and forward and I don't know it was just very weird and odd and so I yeah he was standing like 10 meters away from me and I just asked in a very certain and loud voice like hello is everything okay are you okay and he just stared at me and he was shaking his head like that and didn't smile didn't say anything and then he disappeared in the bushes and I sat there with my pasta pot in my arm um, yeah chewing my pasta and I was like okay is it now 
time to start wondering or is it now time to start questioning whether this was awkward or not because um, yeah sometimes at night I start panicking due to no reason and I know that so um, before panicking I always ask myself is it really a reason to start having fear um, but my gut feeling told me to have fear <laughs> So my heart started bumping and I was like bup, 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 bup. Um, and I was like okay cheerio it's time to go. So uh, within 15 minutes I packed all my stuff. Um, it was already getting dark and yeah my heart didn't stop bumping and so I I packed all my stuff. I was in a real hurry and I just I didn't feel good. And then I had to push my bike through the sand because obviously I was uh, searching for a hidden spot where no people come by, <laughs> as I always do. So I pushed the bike and I was back at the main road. Um, yeah, it was dark already so I turned on my lights and started cycling. Thanks to Traveler's luck and thanks to Google Maps I found this official campsite. It was not far away, just like a 5 or 10 minutes uh, bike ride. And yeah, so I got here, it was dark already. When I woke up this morning I was like, okay, uh, did I overreact? But I decided that I didn't overreact because it was just a very very awkward feeling alone in nature and there's nobody around but then suddenly there are two people sneaking around your tent sometimes it's just better to go on a official campsite like when the gut feeling is not the best then just just don't stay there uh, go somewhere spend money for the night it doesn't matter because uh, my emotional and physical well-being is um, uh, just the most important thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I still feel a little awkward. My mood is not the best today and I'm gonna get packed, pack my stuff and then see where I'm gonna go. I continued my trip through Italy. You might be asking yourself why I didn't plan to go on official campsites each and every night and there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that I love to be free. I love the nature, I love being on my own and I love waking up wherever I decide to pitch my tent. And of course, the second reason is about the budget. So for one night and one tiny little tent I paid 20 euros. My jaw kind of dropped when I heard the price but that's just the price you gotta pay when doing bikepacking in touristic regions. And I was just glad that I had a safe spot for that night. I pedaled and pedaled and pedaled but my situation just didn't get any better. Just uh, refilled my petrol bottle uh, because uh, I ran out of petrol and uh, still want to cook pasta tonight. So yeah, it also started raining and I'll just uh, find a cozy spot to have breakfast. Just uh, anything with a roof would be very nice. Actually not that bad, uh, just a couple of raindrops and I just uh, try to be in a good mood, um, telling myself that everything is okay uh, and yeah I try to, to get in a better uh, mental state uh, and it kind of works I don't feel that bad and I'm good. Let's go. Spoiler, I was definitely not good. I was trying to lie to myself, but it didn't work. I felt like a piece of shit. I felt lost, I felt lonely, I felt awful. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. When I found a dry spot to have breakfast, I just sat there, I observed the raindrops and I noticed that I didn't have much strength left. I didn't want this anymore. Once more, I got ready to cycle in the rain. Once more, I hopped on the bike. 50 kilometers to go. 50 kilometers until I reached a budget-friendly accommodation. And then, I took three days off. Three days, I laid in bed. I didn't leave the room. 
I didn't call anyone. I just lay there, slept and ate and slept and ate. After three days, I didn't feel ready to go, but as the accommodation was fully booked, I had to get back on the road. So here we go once more, back on the road, back on the bike. Back to flat tires and back to a moody life on the go. I just found a place to wash my hands and I'm gonna have a little break here. I had to pee very bad and I didn't know where to go. So I just peed over there. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. One thing, I also prepared my lunch already. Uh, I did that yesterday. <laughs> just gonna show you quickly. So this is pre-cooked pasta in a plastic bag and that's what I'm gonna eat today. Simple life on the go. I'm not in a very good mood, uh, it's not raining, which is uh, a good thing, but to be honest, I think I might just um, do my 350 kilometers to Bari and then uh, take some weeks off in Albania, uh, because I'm, I don't know, I'm tired. Um, yeah, I'm just not in uh, best shape. Um, I don't know, uh, I guess that's just what it is sometimes, but yeah, I know that I need a break. As you can see, I definitely needed a break, but I wanted to make my way to Bari to hop on a ferry and get some time off the bike in Albania. So what's the best idea when feeling totally tired, done and stressed out? Yep, right, you just cycle your ass off because you're already feeling bad. Woo, 106, woo! Nice weather, Ooh, let's go. No need to listen to your body nor your psyche. Uh, I recently heard a sentence and I liked it very much. And it goes like this, move your ass and your mind will follow. What a great idea. And that's my slogan for today. 129. Come on! And... Yes! 130 kilometers. Yep. That's not bad. Uh, I'm gonna search for a place to sleep now. Just gonna eat the leftovers of the pasta. Uh, the trash bag pasta. And that's it for today. After cycling 135 kilometers, I left the main road to find a hidden spot to pitch my tent. I just wanted to lay down, eat my trash bag pasta and fall asleep. But sometimes life has different plans. Sometimes things tend to turn out different than imagined. Hola, ciao! Huh? Uh, scusi, no, no parlo italiano, pero... Uh... Uh, Espanol, Frances, or English? And this is how I met Ferdinando and his wife Carmela. 15 minutes after bumping into him in front of his house, I found myself sitting in a cozy kitchen, having dinner with two wonderful people, and I did not sleep in my tent that night. The next morning I wanted to continue my journey and as Ferdinando loves cycling he just decided to join me for a couple of kilometers together with his friend Giuseppe. When Giuseppe heard of my plans to cycle to Bari he insisted of inviting me to his house because of the bad weather forecast. I couldn't say no to this kind offer and I was glad to have a roof over my head.
Giuseppe and Mena welcomed me as if I was already part of the family. I was blessed with amazing food, heartwarming conversations and I enjoyed the company of one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen, Napoleone. We spent cozy afternoons together, we sang, we talked, we laughed. Sorry. Uh... Spero duri la batteria. Uh, do you want mine? Ah, okay. Italiano e... Uh, yes. Hey Siri! Come si dice scienziata in inglese? The online translator became part of the family as well. Giuseppe went back in time and shared some of his key moments in life with me. His story was incredible. It was a story about life, about love, about pain and injuries. His point of view about good and bad, God and energy and how life sometimes turns out to be different than expected. Different, but not in a bad way. Uh, beautiful, beautiful way of thinking. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, look, you, you're speaking to me and the uh, energy. Yes. God isn't the energy. God isn't the you are. God isn't the you. Yeah. For, like God is and the energy. For some it's God, for some it's energy, for some it's the universe, for some it's Buddha, for some it's Allah, for some it's... Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. yes, there is something. I was so thankful because this hospitality felt like a gift from the universe. This was exactly what I needed. I needed to feel safe, I needed to be surrounded by good-hearted humans, and I needed company. I did not want to feel lonely. We spent four days together and saying goodbye was definitely not easy. It almost felt like leaving home. Giuseppe and Ferdinando cycled with me for about 50 kilometers and then I was back on the bike and back on the road by myself. having a good start into the day <laughs> now I look like a piece of shit this road it's just a mess look at this this is a total mess everything looks like that that was definitely not the plan I thought I was doing uh, road cycling but obviously ob but obviously I'm not and Oh, it's a mess, like seriously. A okay, I'll just continue. Um, but I just realized that I definitely have to do something to get rid of my anger issues. I had them when I started backpacking, then they were gone. And now for a couple of weeks, they are back, um, which means I get angry and grinchy and pissed off quite quick. Okay, Lara, stop. Uh, everything is fine. You're not having any problems. It's just a dirt road, so go. <laughs> and yeah, I guess now I'm, I'm just gonna continue. Take a deep breath and everything will be fine. Spoiler, not even a single thing was going to be fine. Sorry for the beeping, but that's definitely necessary. Fucking shit! Ich hasse diese Dreckscheiße, Mann. Ey, geht mir das auf den Zeiger. So ein Abfuck. Ach, fuck dich hart in du blödes fuck. Dreckscheiß Teil. Alter. Ich hasse es so sehr. Fuck dich in du blödes Gesicht. Ich hasse es. Alter, ich kann nicht mal laufen. So eine F Scheiße, Alter. Okay, it's really bad. Like, I thought it wasn't that bad, but seriously, 
I can't even push my bike anymore because the mud is in between the tires and the rear fork, my chain is completely full with mud. My spokes are full with mud and everything is just muddy and I don't know where to go. I don't know if I, I don't know if I should go back or f just continue going that way because now I'm right in the middle of this and I don't know if it's getting worse or not. And uh, now there's some little animals. Um, ah, uh, yeah, it's really bad. I hate it. Like seriously, I'm. Um, oh, uh, I better stop talking now. Ich kann es nicht mehr. Ich habe keinen Bock mehr. Ich habe keinen Bock mehr auf Englisch zu sprechen. Ist mir alles zu blöd. Ich finde es einfach nur Scheiße. Und ich mache jetzt Content auf Deutsch, weil es mich einfach nur anpisst, Alter. Ich bin so angepisst und habe so keinen Bock mehr auf diese Drecksscheiße. Ich bin stinksauer. So ein Dreck, Alter. Anger made me push my bike further and further. I was furious. I was about to lose temper and I actually was getting close to an emotional breakdown. I didn't want this anymore. It didn't feel right. Again, I felt lost and lonely and I felt so small. I felt disconnected from myself and I had the urge to change something. I needed change. I needed to calm down. I needed a break. I was at a point where I questioned my life on the road. I questioned the journey, I questioned my actions and I questioned myself. I was getting closer to Bari from where I wanted to hop on a boat to get to Albania. I had something like 135 kilometers to go. I wanted to take it slow. I wanted to calm down, but something inside me didn't let me take it slow. Something inside me pushed me to go beyond my limits again and again and again. I am on a new mission. Why the heck should I just uh, take it slow? I mean, uh, there's not much of a difference if I'm gonna wild camp one more night just right in front of Bari or if I just uh, cycle to Bari and get the ferry at 10 p.m. It's pretty doable. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like challenging myself. Cheerio, hey ho, let's go. So I cycled and cycled and cycled. I didn't question my choice of rushing through Italy. I just had to. Instead of allowing myself to feel low, I forced my body and my mind to function. And so I functioned and I reached the harbor of Bari to hop on a ferry to go to unknown land. I made it to the harbor. It's time to say bye bye Italia. Ciao Italia. And I'm ready for the next adventure or ready for some days off the bike. Cheerio. Goodbye. Salut. Adios. And I'll see you next time. A cheeriotic hello from the office. Um, two months have passed and I just uh, wanted to let you know that I'm fine. But yeah, back in Italy, I was really having a difficult time and also wanted to let you know that it's totally normal to have uh, hard times and difficult times and bad times. And it doesn't matter if you're at home or on the road, it's just very normal to have difficult times. Uh, I just quickly wanted to mention two things. The first thing is that I'm slightly getting annoyed of filming every step I take. Every single day. 
so there might be a little vlog summer break. Um, yeah, but of course I love making videos and I want to continue. So for the next couple of months, I would love to do some uh, bikepacking setup videos or just uh, videos about bikepacking and my experiences. If you want to know something or if you're interested in something, um, I would love to read your comments down below. Yeah, just let me know. The second thing is that I just wanted to say thank you once more. Thanks for watching my stuff. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for all your lovely messages. Some of them are really hard touching. And of course, also a huge thanks to the Cheeriotic Patreon and Coffee family. Thanks for supporting my journey financially. I think of you while having my 1000 coffees each day on the road. I guess I see you soon. Cheerio, goodbye, salut and adios. Thank you.